I'm John Darmer, the Cokie Valley Sword Group, and today we're talking about meditation. Um, specifically, meditation as it applies to Kyoho as Masashi's laid it out. So, when we say meditation, what do we mean, right? Uh, you Google search meditation and you just wind up with a whole plethora of people and their ideas and their methods and their, their goals for meditation. Um, and that's usually how they're broken apart, you know, into what they're doing to meditate and what their goal for meditation is. Um, for us, we're going to uh, kind of rein this description, this definition down a little bit to be one of two things. Either a method for reining in the natural tendencies of your mind, or a method for in the moment, changing how your mind works. So, one's kind of before to build a, a, a general operating system that you behave in, and the other is for uh, during an event to again change how your mind works. Um, so, when we. The, the idea of. Uh, traditional Japanese meditation and classical sword arts uh, evokes this idea of uh, the Buddhist monk in Zazen in the seated or kneeling meditation um, you know for hours on end while they, they focus on nothing right and just become an observer of their own mind and body right and while it is certainly true uh, that I think many Kyoho practitioners practice Zazen on their own. Uh, it is not something that we, in my experience, um, generally devote in-class time to, uh, or at least any meaningful in-class time to. Uh, I'm so uh, over a minute, right? Um, now, uh, it's certainly true that uh, Many martial artists, uh, specifically teachers I'm speaking to here, have incorporated some kind of zazen into their classes. Um, if any of you guys are watching, take a long, hard look at what your practice is and why you're doing it. And be sure that your goal is actually in line with what you get out of it. and that you're not just using Zazen as a kind of uh, oriental flavoring to add legitimacy to what you're doing, right? Just a word of caution. Fresh and no. Kyo. Right? We just do not spend a lot of class time, if any, uh, doing Zazen meditation. It's just like, oh, well, if you don't do meditation in class and do you just not meditate in your art? No, we do. We just use a different kind of meditation, which is called Zanshin. Now, Zanshin is a very common word in uh, Budo, in uh, uh, Japanese warrior arts uh, of any kind, any flavor. Um, and uh, the word itself, Zanshin, means something like uh, the mind that's still there, the mind that remains. Um, unfortunately, while this is a, a very great descriptor, it uh, leaves things just a little vague and it allows people to get a, a sort of, um, I think, uh, inaccurate sense of what Zanshin is, right? So, if we use bowling as an example, we look at a mediocre bowler, you know, they pick up their ball, they go, they roll, once the ball leaves their hand, they drop their form, kind of look around maybe, maybe they watch the pins, maybe they turn around to their, their buddies or whatever, and uh, uh, traditional martial arts might say, oh, he lacks Zanshin. His mind did not remain on his task. Whew. It's doomed to failure. And, uh, you know, certainly follow through is very important uh, in bowling or anything else. And then they'd watch a, a professional bowler 
butt wiggle, rolls them all, holds their form, very majestic. The ball hits the pins, the pins fall over, and then, come out, Toku, he releases. This man must have great zanshin, right, they, they declare. But, uh, uh, follow through and zanshin are not the same thing, right? That's, they are not. Uh, because zanshin is not, it is not dependent on how you shape your body. Zanshin is the remaining mind, right? And what does it remain on? It doesn't remain on the goal. It doesn't remain on the target, right? What it's remaining on is the interaction between you and the target, right? So, uh, it does not matter if you're doing, uh, let's say, uh, ukenagashi, right? Ba -ba 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 -ba, and you just do the most beautiful ukenagashi, they back, you push. Mm. Very mean face. Mm. I'm serious, I've got a mean face. And then come out, mm. right? And back up. You can look real good and not have zanshin, right? You can also look real sloppy and not have and and have zanshin, though it's it's much rarer. Um, but uh, worth worth thinking about. But for now, let's dive into what it is, right? So if it's this continued focus on the relationship, what does that mean? Right, that's a lot of words, but what does it mean? When we flip that switch and it's go time, you know, it doesn't doesn't matter, you know, what we're doing or how we're doing it. Uh, let's use uh, ukunagashi, ukunagashi again. In the kata, the moment he pushes from Tate Zen, it's on, right? You flip that switch, you bring your mind and your focus into it. Now, for me, I'm not thinking about how I'm going to cut him. I'm not thinking of the sequence of events. I'm not thinking about angles and distance that I'm traveling. I am not thinking about anything at all specific. In fact, I'm not thinking about anything. I am not uh, thinking in a kind of normal A, B, C sort of partitioned everything in its neat little box kind of way. Because I'm, I'm just not thinking. What I'm doing is bringing my mind into this kind of uh, open nebula of possibility, right? where I'm not choosing anything, but like uh, like stars passing by me, the possibility of each kind of thing are here. But just like in Inzan no Metsuke, where I'm not looking into the guy's eyes, I'm seeing everything broadly. The same thing is happening inside my mind here, right? Where I am sort of broadly observing the possibilities as they appear, right? And you'll watch them watch is a rough word, they'll, they'll change. Some of them will start off as like vague little like maybes and mature into very big, strong, bright things that you go, oh, yes, that's where we're going to go, right? And some of them will get very big and strong and then something will happen and they'll, whoop, and they'll peter out into nothing, right? But it's in this sort of vague, open mind. But just because you're not mentally focused on an individual thing does not mean that your mind is relaxed. Quite the opposite. Your mind should be very intent, uh, very powerful, and focused on what your, your interaction is. What I mean is focused on the fact that you're in a violent situation, and you have to resolve it. 
not on the specifics of the situation, not on the specifics of the enemy, not on the specifics of your environment, or the specifics of how you intend to resolve it, but just that, that sort of weird proto-idea that you're in violence and you have to resolve it, and that's your assumption, right? And it continues until you have uh, resolved that situation. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean, like, I come up, I thwack the dude, and then, ah, Zanshin is released, and I just, la, 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 right? If he can operate at all, right? If there is, if there is any way that this situation has not been resolved, my Zanshin has to stay on him, right? My Zanshin has to stay in me on him, right? Or her, or them, or it, right? Doesn't matter, right? This is not a... This is not a, a martial-only concept, uh, which is convenient, because not a lot of us get in a lot of fights, and, uh, but we, we do make a lot of phone calls, right? Zanshin of the phone call, right? I'm here in the phone call. Not off here thinking about what I'm going to do next, not checking Facebook, not... I'm just boom. And I am here, and I am focused not on anything specific, except the task that I'm doing, right? The relation that I'm resolving. Right? This, uh... So that's what it is. Why do we do it, right? What's the purpose? And the purpose of Zanshin is quite simple. It is to keep us from running away. I don't mean physically running away. There, there are lots of people that get into fights when just totally bulldoze the guy and the whole fight they were running away in their mind, right? Um, so it's also not as though victory is dependent on Zanshin. You can win without having Zanshin. People do it every day in, in all sorts of ways. But for us, we are more likely, for anybody, you are more likely to succeed if you're focused on your task. Um, this is also one of the, uh, right, in, in, in modern times, we've begun to understand how the brain operates uh, much better. Uh, between our, our functional magnetic uh, resonance imaging, between our EKGs, between all of our measurement tools, we've been able to look at experiences, internal experiences people have, and go, oh, this is what's happening in your mind. These are the effects on your body. This is not just some, like, uh, like uh, imagined thing in you that's happening. It is a thing that is very much happening in you that has external consequences. And one of the things that's come out is this idea of uh, the flow state, right? being in the zone as a quantifiable and a very measurable um, occurrence that happens in people. Now, this is certainly not a new phenomenon, right? It's been part of the human makeup for as long as we've had history, uh, and we've known it by all kinds of names. But it is a mental state in which you can get into that no mind, right? It is that to cut from nothing, right? To not have an intention to cut in a specific way, but to cut successfully. It is just, uh, it is what most martial artists strive for as the, the apex of their work. And what's cool, especially about sort of the modern technology and being able to look at, 
how to propagate this state is that they found that the more you enter into this flow state, the easier it is to enter into. And for us, Zanshen is our key. It is our, our entryway into this uh, no mind, no sword, right? It is, it is how we get into that flow state where we can operate with total efficiency, right? Where that tacky psyche kicks in and we experience the passage of time uh, differently. Not just in terms of how we perceive it, but how we feel about the passage of time. Uh, and I'm talking small <laughs> moments of time within the fight as we're working. So, uh, Zanshin can really not be overemphasized, I don't think. Uh, of course, just like we've talked about before, when you're done and you've resolved, right, Kamayo you have to release that tension. You have to release that uh, extreme intent in training. Um, because in training, the other guy's not going to be resolved, right? You come to a, a situation where you sort of mutually part, but it's not done in the in the way that your your your, your reptilian brain uh, understands done to be, in other words, when the guy is completely resolved. And so you can really cause a lot of damage uh, to your heart, your, your emotional heart, and your mind uh, by not modulating this experience, by not crafting, like, being able to have that on switch, boom, it's work time, is important, right? Because it helps you to get out of that lull of observation. In other words, boom, I, I'm hit suddenly, unexpectedly. What am I doing? What's going on? Let me assess my environment. Like, oh God, I'm getting hit so much, right? What? Why? Is this going? Right, and it helps us to switch out of the, boom, I've been hit, on switch. And I take the information in as uh, with purpose, right? Not just vaguely. But developing that off switch, that Kamayo Toku, is equally as important, right? Equally as important. So, um, I think anything beyond this is mostly just going to be me rambling. So, if this is unclear, and it very well might be. <laughs> Watch it again. Take some time. Train for a while. Right? You can use Zanshin in solo practice. Right? You have your your imaginary bad guy, and you work and you work and you work and boom. Right? Focused on that interaction. Focused in that nebula of possibility as you move through it. Not choosing, just acting. Um, and then come out to and it's released, right? Play with it a bit. Then watch the video again. See if uh, now that you've roughed the surface up a little bit, something catches, like panning for gold, right? Um, yeah. As always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.